Theater at Keswick Wise and Wills Center for Healthy Living in Baltimore. And today I've got a very interesting topic for you. Now we all know that like milk and eggs and so most of the things that we cook with have expiration dates, right? But did you know like your bath wash, sunscreen, toothpaste, deodorant, lipstick, makeup, all of those things have expiration dates. And it can be really kind of tricky trying to understand um, how long different things are good for and why you just can't keep them forever, right? We've all dug through something and been like, ooh, how long I've got that? Or for those of us that wear makeup, we have a favorite lip gloss that's been in the bottom of our bag or um, an eyeliner that we don't use very often but we've probably had for five years. We need to throw all that stuff away because we are risking um, potentially our health um, by trapping bacteria and other things with that old product. So um, pretty much, it's a reminder that your skincare, um, your toiletries, your makeup all actually have expiration dates on them. And there's a bunch of surveys out there, but somewhere around 90 to like 95% of people, men and women, have said that they have knowingly either used or do use expired skincare type products. So what's the problem with an expired lipstick? Like why can't it last forever? Well, a couple of different things. Whatever the active ingredient is for it, over time breaks down and can make it ineffective. So say you've got some skincare, some anti-aging skincare, right? And you've had it in your drawer for forever and you haven't used it in a long time. You're like, oh, well, I'm gonna try this now. It's probably not going to be very effective um, because it's actual active ingredients. The things that do what they're supposed to do have long since degraded and broken down and are more or less not there anymore. Um, other things are is that the older it is, the more likely it's going to be full of bacteria, mold, and funguses. Um, and so you think about that, it's trapped in there and every time you put it on your face or your body, you're just spreading that bacteria around. Other things are because all that bacteria is in there, you're going to be more likely to have skin irritation. You're liable to have skin infections, eye infections, styes, all kinds of icky stuff. Now, the easiest and simplest rule of thumb, which I don't recommend using as your number one, is that if you see any changes in the color, the texture, the smell, or you start to see it separate, so it might be oily up here and clumpy down here, that's just all together, toss it, this stuff has gone bad. It's kind of like the same thing of like when you pick up the milk jug and you take a sniff of it and you're like, ooh, you know? That's a totally visit this product has gone rancid. And that's usually the exception, not the norm. So now we really need to know how we can tell if our product is good and how long it is. So a lot of companies, it's unfortunately not fully required in the United States, however it is in Europe and most other countries, is most of your more ethical brands are going to, on their packaging, actually list um, either an expiration date or a, um, a symbol that's going to show you that once it's open, this is the amount of time before you should get rid of it. So um, this package here, this is actually a blush. I'm gonna hold this up here close to you so that you can kind of see these. And so on this label here, the top one shows that it is paraben free. The second one right here that I'll get into a little bit more tells me that it is Leaping Bunny certified. Then this little thing right here, I'm gonna get up close so that you can be sure to see this. This little jar with the lid open that has a number in there and on this one it says 12 months, tells me that from the time I open this blush, um, it's gonna be most effective and in, um, shouldn't be used for much longer than 12 months before you do it and then it's recyclable. So just some kind of different products here to show you. Um, this is a lip gloss here and 
right there on the packaging is that little symbol here. I'm gonna try to find you some other things that have them on there. Um, this is body wash as well. It's got those symbols on there. Um, here you go, this is some hair styling foam here and if you look on it here, same thing, it's got that label at 24 months. So first things first, um, more often than not, especially on your high-end brands, you're going to see that little bitty jar with the number related to it. And that's how um, long it's really good and safe for you to use after you've opened it. Other things that you're gonna look for are like expiration dates. So um, this bottle of contact, contact lens solution right here has an expiration date on it of January 6th, 2021, okay? Um, I actually was going through some of the drawers here in our house and I found this bottle of heating oil, heating hair oil, right? And I thought, oh my goodness, like I forgot I had this. Y'all, look at the expiration date on that, okay? Um, May 1st of 2018. We all have these products. Now, knowing this, this is gonna get tossed um, and then, well actually, it's gonna get poured down the drain um, and then recycled, but Pay attention to why these kinds of things are important. Um, the other thing is, is sometimes when you look at a label, um, it should say something like expiration um, with the deed on it. Otherwise, um, you might have to decipher before, is that a manufactured date and or is that an actual expiration date here? So if you get a product that has no expiration type states on it, what do you do? Because there's a whole lot of them out there, especially in the US because our labeling laws are not very strict in terms of ingredients and safety and fun things like that. So take this thing of dry shampoo here. One of the things you can do is you can look for the batch code on it, which would be like this number right there, okay? And you can take that batch code and go onto a website called checkcosmetic.net, and I'll put that in the uh, header here. And you can pretty much look up what's the expiration date for thousands upon thousands of products. That's a number, another way to do that. Other things that you will regularly see on um, health and beauty product labels are, are things like this, that say paraben free. Why is that something that's important to think about? Well, parabens are a, are pretty much in almost all of, especially in the US, are hair care, skin care, deodorant products. They are rampant. Why are they there? Well, they're there basically because they are a chemical, and most of them are synthetic, preservative. Um, they are there to increase the shelf life of a product. They prevent bacteria, fungus, and mold growth, and um, are really just there as an overall preservative. Now, there's been numerous, numerous studies that have shown that um, parabens are linked to endocrine, 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 bleh, Woo. Um, cancers um, and primarily breast cancer and fertility issues. Then they've also been linked to skin cancers. They um, are found in a lot of our dead marine animals um, and will kill whales and dolphins and things like that. And then if they're in, um, they get poured into our water supply and or via sunscreen. Um, they actually kill reefs, so they're going to contribute to our problems within our ocean. So, not something to be compared with. There's tons of different parabens. So, when you are looking at a label, you are looking for your, anything that says something paraben, and then it has a paraben in it. There are two parabens that we know are very um, unhealthy, and that's propyl paraben and butyl paraben. And those are, all parabens are actually, um, 
banned in the in the um, European Union. So in Europe, they're not allowed to be in any of our health products. But here in the U.S., they're still there. The big problem is because they are in so many different things, we're being exposed to them all day, every day. The actual amount that might be in, you know, your face wash or your shampoo is very small, but it's the accumulation of use of those that becomes dangerous. So that's something that's really kind of important to pay attention to and see if it is in your products. Um, if you are interested in cruelty-free products, you have three symbols that you gotta look for, okay? So the first one and the one that will absolutely assure that your product has had no animal testing of any kind is to find the Leaping Bunny uh, logo. Let me see what here has a big Leaping Bunny. So this right here is the Leaping Bunny logo right there, okay? And that is an international standard that the company agrees to ensure that every single ingredient, every step of the manufacturing process has been cruelty free. It's the only way to know 110% that Fluffy and Fido and Fifi have never had cosmetics or skincare or health and beauty products tested on them. To me, that's something that is super important and I do everything I can to choose cruelty-free products. Um, the other thing, and this is, this is the most stringent standard, would be um, the Leaping Bunny standard. Another potential standard that you'll see here is the Bunny Rabbit. Here. Okay, that one there is um, cruelty-free via PETA. So this is only for U.S.-based products and this is a PETA guarantee people for the ethical treatment of animals guarantee um, there is a little controversy about you know whether along the steps potentially that um, there might be some animal development testing so if it's of super importance to you always go with a leaping sort of bunny certified thing the third one and I don't actually have a product with it is there is an Australian um, guarantee that is for all products coming out of Australia and they have theirs. So those are the only three. Anything else that you see that says cruelty free, there's no necessary true guarantee that is cruelty free. Unfortunately for most products, if they don't have one of those three labels on them, it just means that the final end product, so once it went into this package, that that part of it was not tested on animals. It could be that anywhere along the manufacturing chain, they could have had testing on animals, and or it could also mean that while they didn't test it on animals, that some outside organization did. So if cruelty-free is important to you, you need to look for the Leaping Bunny uh, certified logo or PETA's uh, cute little bunny with the ears. That's the way to determine that. Um, other things there, if it has a, I have something here with it, if it has a circle with a V in it, that's going to show that all the ingredients are vegan, if that's important to you. Um, sunscreens, this is super important to me as well. Um, the only way to truly know that they are reef safe, which means that they won't kill the coral reefs and they're also not going to be toxic to marine animals, is to see this circle with reef friendly written on it as well. And so that's gonna mean it's gonna be safe for the oceans when you head off to the beaches in the summer. Um, so those are kind of some of the labeling things. We could actually talk about a million more labels and chemicals and things like that. That's a talk for another day. So just kind of wanna go through various products and what the recommended uh, time frames of use for them before you should throw them away because they're probably either not effective or they're full of gunk. All right, so um, anything powder-based like blushes, uh, powder foundations, things like that, um, you're typically, ideally 12 months. As long as you are regularly cleaning them, I showed you all how to do that in a previous video, um, you can probably go out to two years. However, if you've never cleaned your makeup and you've had it for over a year, I'd get rid of it because it's probably got creepy crawlies. All right, concealers. Um, typically, concealers can last 12 to 18 months. 
they can go towards that 18 months more so if they are um, cream or wax based. If they're liquid, I'd get rid of them close to that 12 months time point. Liquid foundations, those are just a great place for bacteria to live out in and so typically you need to get rid of those within six months if you have like i showed you in a previous video a like wax or powder you can typically take those foundations out to 12 to 18 months so the big thing with most of these things related to cosmetics are if you are cleaning your cosmetics you can probably extend the life of them about another six months off their expiration date. If you are not cleaning them at all, I would be tossing them most definitely at the expiration date or potentially before because they are going to be full of bacteria. Um, let's see what else here. Eyeshadows. Um, eyeshadows six to eight months. Anything that's going to come into contact with your eyes. One, we should be making sure that our hands are clean, our makeup is clean, and that we're replacing it regularly because the eyes are the most susceptible to bacteria. So it's six to eight months for eyeshadows. Um, eyeliners, if we're talking liquid eyeliner, um, like something like this, okay? Really with a liquid eyeliner, three months. That's it, same thing. It's gonna be very similar to a mascara. This is gonna pick up a whole lot of bacteria. Plus, typically they start to dry out within about three months. If we're talking about a pencil, right? And you've been cleaning it and maintaining it, things like that, that pencil can go six months, nine months. But if you're using it regularly, you're probably gonna be long done with it by that six month time period here. All right. Mascara, y'all. This is where we gotta have a heart to heart. Mascara, three months is it. If you have mascara that you've been using since um, 1992, it's probably hard as a rock. It probably doesn't work very well, and ooh, goodness gracious, what's on that wand? Um, mascara truly should not go past three months. And I wanna show you something here. So, this one is a mascara, it's the same brand, two different colors, because I like to use both black and brown. This is a brand new, just opened like two days ago. See how fluffy, see how pretty, it has no clumps on it, mascara. That's like a couple of days old. This one here is almost exactly three months old. See, see what that wand looks like? Look at the differences between these two. Pretty and fluffy, not so pretty, not so fluffy. That's brand new, that's three months. This is just three months. This is dirt, oil, bacteria, um, oxidation of the product, drying of the product, all of those things um, are playing in here. If your mascara wand looks worse than this one, and this one's only three months old, please, please do us a favor and get rid of it. The other thing, when we're talking about mascara is We've all seen people do this, that whole, and I'm not even gonna do this because I'm not gonna ruin the last couple days of this mascara that I have. We never pump a mascara up and down, okay, in there to get product on it. Why? It puts air in there. Air breeds bacteria. So when you need to use your mascara wand, you are only swirling it inside the tube, never pumping it because that's gonna trap air and make more bacteria grow. Tip of the day here. All right, lip liners. Typically, you can get them um, up to two years, 24 months for them. Lipsticks and lip glosses, um, pretty much you can go um, 24 months to two years. And I say this again of like, you should be cleaning it and getting rid of bacteria like I previously showed you. So somewhere between one year to two years for them. Other things that um, we typically use for Bath & Body. If you got a loofah, you know, like one of those little scrub she looking things in your shower, most people's are really, really gross. Um, three weeks, y'all, before you should be getting rid of them. Think about that. You're like washing your body and taking off dead skin cells and then you're hanging it in a hot, humid environment it's gonna pick up a whole lot of bacteria super fast. Same thing with those cute little fluffy sponges and those um, 
I guess it's a loofah too, but the little fluffy ones, um, those are like seven, seven, eight weeks, y'all. So like every two months, you should be getting rid of them because they are just soaking up all kinds of gunk. Um, typically like your facial moisturizers, skin cream, anything that's like anti-aging, sunscreen, um, one year, 12 months max, especially with sunscreen, y'all. Your sunscreen should never see two summers. So if you bought it last summer, guess what? This summer, you should not be using this sunscreen. For one, the active ingredients are pretty much already broken down, and so this sunscreen is not going to be effective. And we know that too, if you're using a chemical-based sunscreen, um, which is what most people are actually using, um, it could potentially increase your risk of getting a skin cancer. Ideally, if all else fails, choose a product that's got zinc oxide. It's considered a non-chemical-based uh, sunscreen here. Um, there's a lot of great ones on the product now, and these are going to be the most effective sunscreens out there. Let's see, what other fun things? Shampoo and conditioner um, typically has a shelf life of two years. Um, I mean, I don't know about you. I go through shampoo way too quickly. I probably use way too much. So two years for shampoo and conditioner. Toothpaste, shaving cream, same thing, about a two-year lifespan for it deodorant, bar soap, mouthwash, those things can go up to three years um, in terms of expiration date. Perfume, nail polish, something like two years. Um, kind of the big things that you want to take away when you are looking at your products and looking at are they still good, are they still safe is, number one rule, if in doubt, toss it out. Um, you should also be storing all of your health and beauty products um, away from direct sunlight, away from heat, and away from humidity. Your bathroom is probably not the place for it, and that's where 99% of us store it. So if you are storing it, you definitely need to be keeping your expiration dates in mind because that warm, humid air is going to degrade them and or potentially put bacteria into them quicker. Ideally, we should be keeping them in cool, dry places. Um, if you've got something that is, say, in a pot, one, before you ever touch it, clean hands. Two, it would be best to use something like a little spatula or a little clean spoon to dig it out. So you don't put your hands in there and increase the amount of bacteria that's in there. So. That's kind of skincare and beauty expiration date one-on-one. -on -one. I'll be coming back with more fun and interesting things. I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day. Bye-bye.